vast amount of goods traffic brought about by the rapid expansion of the steel industry has been responsible for introducing new methods of marshalling wagons in South Wales, which are economical in operation and speed up delivery without damage to either wagons or goods. The Margam Marshalling Yard on the western region of British Railways is the first fully automatic hump or gravity type yard to be opened in Europe and is capable of handling up to 4,500 wagons a day. It is arranged in four sections. Reception. Hump. Sorting. Departure. There are 12 reception lines where incoming trains of wagons await their turn for marshalling. The reception sidings converge into a single track over the hump, which has a down gradient of 1 in 18 and connects the reception and sorting sidings. This gradient allows a wagon to gain sufficient momentum to reach the far end of any siding. As the rolling characteristics of the wagons and the distances they have to run vary, retarders are used which squeeze the wheels of the wagons and so control their speed. There are two primary retarders and eight secondary retarders which are used to control the running of the wagons into 50 sorting sidings. The working of the yard is controlled from a building near the hump. The ground floor contains the standby generator and compressor plant supplying air to the pneumatic retarders and points. It also accommodates the signal engineers and traffic staff. On the first floor are racks which contain the signal interlocking relays and also other relays concerned with the automatic setting of the points. Further racks contain computer and other equipment associated with the electronic control of the retarders. At the top of the building is the control room. The operating panel represents a complete diagrammatic plan of the yard. From here, the operators direct the working of the yard.
They also control incoming trains of wagons for marshalling by directing them to a selected empty siding in the reception area. When a train arrives in the reception sidings, the locomotive is released. Brakes are checked and minor repairs made. From the labels on the wagons, the train is divided into cuts and their destinations noted. At this stage, routine servicing can be undertaken. The cut list, or tally, is relayed to the traffic office in the control building. One moment, please. Hello, tallyman here. I have the tally of the 6.30 a.m. depot. A coded, punched tape is prepared. Simultaneously, a copy of the tally is reproduced on a page printer in the control room. When a train is to be humped, its tape is fed into a tape reader. The destinations of the first four cuts are indicated on the control panel. The points are automatically set to correspond with the destination of the first cut. The proceed signal is given. By injecting signals into the running rails at special frequencies, a duplicate signal is made to operate in the cab of the humping engine. And in addition, the driver and operator can communicate over a radio telephone link. The wagons are propelled over the hump at about one and a half miles an hour.
as each cut goes over the hump, it is allowed to run freely towards two pneumatic retarders. The primary retarder, which is 72 feet long, is powered by two sets of controls so that each half can be operated independently. The secondary retarder is 36 feet long. The main function of the primary retarder is to maintain separation between successive cuts, allowing sufficient time for points to change as the wagons roll towards the secondary retarder. Because wagons vary in their ability to roll, the rolling resistance or rollability must be measured. An oscillator generates pulses at a thousand per second. As the cut approaches the retarder, the leading wheel passes an inductive wheel detector. Which enables the pulses being generated to be counted until the wheel reaches a second detector. This count is stored. Meanwhile, the cut travels past a second pair of detectors where the same procedure is repeated. A comparison is made between the two counts and a computed calculation based on the difference is a measure of rollability. To release the cut from the retarder at a particular exit speed, the actual approach speed must be known. This is measured by radar. A radar aerial radiates a VHF signal in a narrow beam. Part of the signal is reflected back at a higher frequency by the approaching cut. The difference in frequency between the transmitted signal and the received signal is proportional to its speed. The pressure applied to the wheels by the retarder beams is determined by the difference between the actual and the required speeds and by the weight of the wagon. Micro switches mounted in a section of rail are used to detect four different grades of weight. The spacing between cuts is accurately maintained by the primary retarder. The secondary retarders release these cuts with sufficient energy to reach their destination at a speed of not more than four miles an hour. To achieve this, two further variables must be taken into account. The routes to the 50 sidings differ in length, and also in the number of curves which have to be negotiated. These curves present an additional resistance to the free running of the wagons. The setting of the points automatically feed into the system 
a calculated allowance for the appropriate siding. The other variable is the fullness of the siding concerned. A storage system maintains an electrical record of the number of wagons in each siding. Inductive wheel detectors count the wagons fed into each siding and keep the information in the store up to date while humping is in progress. Engines on the departure lines are continually collecting wagons. To allow for wagons being drawn out into the departure sidings, the actual fullness of each of the sorting sidings is indicated by track circuits. Wagons left standing on any of these track circuits affect the resetting of the store. The signal for humping to recommence resets the siding fullness information automatically so that the next train of wagons will be allowed to run the full extent of the space available. The required exit speed from the secondary retarder is computed from rollability, weight, root characteristics, and siding fullness information. The retarder control system, using radar as before, ensures that the cut has the correct amount of energy to run and buffer up to the wagons already standing in that siding. At Margam, Associated Electrical Industries Limited, working in conjunction with the British Transport Commission, has produced the most up-to-date marshalling yard in Europe. Making use of radar and analog computers, the operation of this giant yard is efficient and economical. The combination of extensive railway experience, together with the application of modern electronic techniques, augurs well for the future of British Railways.